Hello, everybody. So today we're getting into part two of our energy, transportation, and communication videos and transportation explosion of the 20th century. And it's just massive. So let's just get right into it because what's important to understand is we have all sorts of new energy sources. So we can build all sorts of new things to move stuff around. And thus, we have to build the facilities, if you will, and the infrastructure in order to do that. And first up is the pipeline system. The fact of the matter is, is we have lots of oil and gas in the world and transporting them by truck is not really an option. We actually just have too much of it and it's not particularly safe to do that. So what have we done? We have built massive pipelines everywhere. So I think Europe is a great example to use to understand the massive amount of pipelines. Many of these are actually underground. Um, that transport oil and gas, and you can see the directions that they're coming from. So coming from places like Norway and up from Algeria and Libya and from Qatar and Turkey and then across from Russia. And it is able to deliver these to processing plants and other types of areas that are going to use those resources and thus, you know, create other pipeline systems that can get it like literally all the way to like your house in the case of like gas and stuff like that. And so the pipelines have become a really effective way. Now, don't get me wrong. There are pipeline accidents and we can have all of these problems with them. 100% kind of discussed that issue in some of my environmental um, videos, but this is a huge undertaking and has allowed us to use those resources much more effectively. Next, we go to rail systems, and rail systems are just as important, um, not only for the travel of goods, uh, which of course is massive because you can put a lot more, again, of a product on a train than a car or a truck, but also the moving of people. Particularly in Europe, Japan, and China, we have high-speed railway systems that allow you to move people at a feverish rate. Um, just to give you an idea, uh, some of that rail system, like in, in Japan and the European Union, some of those rails can go, like in the United States of America, if you want to go from Boston to Philadelphia, it's going to take you three hours on a train or like, you know, just a, almost as long in a car. Whereas in um, Europe, with some of their high, spe high speed rail systems, you can get there in like 45 minutes. So it is a remarkable way that people can move around. Also extends economic opportunities because you don't actually necessarily have to own a car, although owning a car is going to be a big deal anyway, but you don't have to own a car. You can get to and from work. You can spread out a little bit more. Um, of course, the railway system has allowed nations to populate many places, particularly the United States and Russia, uh, as well as China have been able to populate the far kind of extended areas in their country or the really, really rural or remote areas because you can build train lines to get out there. And then, of course, we get back to the building or of the economy, all right? And moving things with freight trains is absolutely crucial, and it allows us to deliver a large amount of raw materials or manufacturing materials to different markets um, much more efficiently. So the rail systems are huge. And then, of course, we have our highway systems. I'm going to be getting into the importance of the car in the moment, but mainly because of the development of the car was the development of roads even more so than the ones we already have. Okay, on the left, you see the blue ones are the interstate highways, and the red ones are more localized uh, highways within states. And on the right, you see the European system, which mainly is just paving over old Roman roads because the Romans were awesome like that. Look, roadway systems have been crucial for countries, I mean, going back to the Persians, who really were the ones that made road systems a vital part of what they were doing, all the way up to the Romans, who kind of perfect them and moving so on and so forth from there. Um, the development of the car will really increase the desire to make these roads and why we have so many roads today. But again, between cars and trucking, moving around people and goods, and the road systems allow you to do that. And I'm going to get deeper into that in a little bit. And of course, we can't forget shipping. And look at all of the shipping lanes in the world. I mean, it's just so many. Now, we've talked about some areas of the world, and I want to be very crucial because we need to understand there are areas that are most important for trade because this gets the most volume. So we look at those yellow ones, right? 
you know, over 5,000 journeys a year. So let's look at some of the spots as I move the mouse. So go over here. Okay, west coast of the United States, of course, is really important. But what do we have here? Right? Panama Canal. Boom. We go through the Panama Canal and then up into different areas here. And then what do we have here? Okay. That is the Strait of Gibraltar, which gives you access up here to the Dardanelles and the Black Sea. We've been talking about the Black Sea. Look at all this stuff in Asia comes out to the Black Sea. And then, oh, what's this? Yes. From areas in Southern Europe, North and Africa, we're going to go through the Suez Canal, which is absolutely important and huge. It gets out here. All these areas with oil right here, cut Yemen, the United Arab Emirates, Bahrain, Saudi Arabia. What do we go through here? The Strait of Hormuz. That's perfect. Oh, look, Southern India. Huge focus the entire year that we've been talking about. Once again, Strait of Malacca. Perhaps one of the biggest moments in, in trade history was when these were discovered and then we're going up into China. I think what's great about learning about these shipping things is that, I mean, this, this re really reinforces all the things that we've talked about this year but really shows you how crucial that is also on the side also shows how also shows you how the most powerful nations in the world have huge navies that can take advantage of these shipping lanes and also protect the shipping as well so something to remember and then we have the massive container ships look at how much stuff okay in different spots on this picture you're looking at 11 shipping containers high and as many as 20 shipping uh containers across so you're looking on this ship right here has over 20 or no, over 20 over 2,000 shipping containers I mean just massive but this is what's going to connect the world and we're going to talk about that and globalization and stuff later but these types of ships with those types of shipping lanes are vital but when it comes down to communication or not communication of of transportation it all comes down to the automobile because this is the one that's the biggest this is the one that is literally everywhere and this is something that everybody kind of wants and of course we can go back to mr henry ford and the development of the ford model t in the year 1908 and what was so crucial about this was one it was really well made but two is it made obtaining a car i have there in quotes democratic and what i mean by that is because you took the ideas of the mobilized assembly line that Ford studied and made to perfection. He was able to make these cars at a reasonable price that everyday people, particularly in the middle class or even the lower end of the middle class, could afford. And as a result, more and more people getting a car became something that they wanted to do. Post-World War II, however, is really when car buying just explodes. The 1950s on, we have seen just, it just builds and builds and builds and get to the point where in 2010, over 1 billion cars available in the world. Absolutely crazy. But what's more important is, is all of the, the impacts of that, positive and negative. One, it allows your population to spread out. Okay, we talked about industrialization. Everybody has to live in a city. Well, now at mass tran transit, so we have things like um, trains will help and local trains will help, but really it's, it's buses and cars will allow people to not have to live in that one area. I'm sure many of you have family members that might live an hour away from where you work. Well, that can't happen unless you have the car. Like it's absolutely huge. And so the development of suburbs and stuff like that, all because of the car. The connection of rural to urban areas, okay, much, much easier with the car. And that's good for not only connecting those folks with things that they need economically, but also can add into things like tourism and stuff like that in the more remote places of the country. Um, negative, ooh, environment, lots of bad emissions, issues with oil, issues with gas. So can't leave that out. I'll jump down real quick to status. Of course, status is a way that people can measure that often by their material purchases and cars were one. But more importantly, I think one of the biggest impacts of the car that is often undervalued is the freedom and individuality that it brought. It allows people to express themselves by from anything from a bumper sticker to just the type of car that they have to the color of the car that they have. Um, but that freedom to be able to get in a car and go somewhere. I cannot understate the impact of that. Now, I'm a guy that doesn't like to drive. If I don't have to drive, I won't. If I can walk, I'll walk. If I could take public transit, I'll take public transit. But I'm not going to lie. Sometimes, but, but also having that ability to, if I really want to go do something at any given moment, I can get into a car and do it. And you can't really understate that. And the car that I get into, what you see on the right there, not that exact same color, but that is a 
Toyota Corolla. The reason I threw that in, in there, fun little trivia fact, the most sold vehicle in the history of mankind is the Toyota Corolla. So little fun fact there as we finish this up. So hopefully now you understand the mass transportation that is now available, how much it interconnects the world. And the last thing we'll move on to is communication. See you soon, guys.